after that is a game that I am really excited yeah. about. This is out of the Half whole Traveler. list. This is the first like big one for us, right? Yes. Well, well Fire, Fire, Emblem, Fire Emblem's huge for me. And, yeah. But um. But yeah, this game because we just played Bravely Default two in twenty twenty one, and that game was phenomenal. And this is basically just another version of Bravely Default. Honestly, like it's the same yeah. as like Battle System, uh, with a different art style and an art style that I really have grown to like and. I like the entire concept of it. There's eight different classes, eight different job classes, and each class is a is assigned to a character, right? So these characters have their own storylines, and you get to choose where you start from. So you're like, oh, I like the dancer, or I like, you know, you little slut, or you like the black mage, or you like the white mage, or you like the warrior, or you like the thief, or you like the merchant. So you choose one, right? You choose one to start off with, and they have an entire. In the original game, they had an entire three chapter like three arcs story that you play through and it, it's like fully developed too there's plots there's backstabbing there's all there's heartbreak tragedy all this type of shit you play these fully formed stories with these characters and as you do that you travel around the map and you end up finding the other jobs that you did not choose to start the game with and you just play through their story as well mm -hmm. uh and then your party grows over time so eventually the way it works is you end up with all eight characters, hence the name Octopath Traveler. Everything's Octo. So it's like eight characters. Eventually, you end up with all eight on your party. Uh, and the battles are teams of four. And you can mix and match jobs. So it has a really immersive job system like most of these types of games where after a while, your warrior can learn merchant skills. And they can actually just be a merchant. And when you choose them to be a new job or a sub job, whatever, their entire costume changes. It's, a lot, it's very detailed for what... This game is like it's sprite based, but like the entire costume change. So your warrior is now a merchant and he has a merchant outfit. He's a black mage, he has the black mage outfit. And then obviously certain people are more geared towards certain uh sub jobs. So like your warrior is probably an idiot. So he's probably not gonna be good at black magic. But you can kind of force it on him if you want to, but he won't be as good as the scholar. The guy who started off as a scholar, if you make him a white mage and a black mage, he's gonna excel, obviously, right? Like that's that's just how that works. Um so it has a lot of cool elements to it, but like the whole point of it is to mix and match job classes to create really broken combinations and you can end battles as quick as possible and while also enjoying these eight different stories that at the end of it there's always like some big evil that all eight of them are kind of found that they're connected in a way yep. and they fight <clears throat> that at the end uh, it's, it's just a really fun RPG so if you like turn based RPGs that have a really unique battle system or if you've ever just played Bravely Default. Yeah, the Bravely game... Default battle system isn't fucking incredible and then when they made Octopath Traveler, which was essentially an offshoot of the Bravely Default battle system with just an yeah. awesome fucking art style. Like personally, because Bravely Default came out first is the one I played first, I'm yeah. biased toward Bravely Default, but I think in terms of art style, I think Octopath Travel looks better. Like I like, I blatantly like the way Octopath Traveler looks more than Bravely Default and Bravely Default yeah. 2. And I like it because I, even though I played Bravely Default before this, I played Bravely Default on the uh, 3DS. And even though I played that first, I still really like Octopath. I actually finished the first Octopath Traveler, and I didn't expect that I would like it so much. Like, I had no idea that it, this game in 2020, I think is when I played it, or maybe 20, it might have been 2019, it's been so long. But whenever I played it, I didn't expect that at my big age, that I would just love a sprite graphic game <laughs> that's also turn-based because everything that's coming out now is like it's it's giving very like Kingdom Hearts wannabe or like Tales game vibes where you know 3D map you get into a battle and it's like you have to actually move your character action RPG yeah uh, turn-based RPGs just aren't as prevalent as they used to be when I was growing up. So as soon as I started playing this, I realized that I actually think I just like turn-based RPGs more than I like uh, action RPGs. That's just that's just like a preference of mine. Yeah, yeah. And so I played this from start to finish without stopping. That's the thing for me is it scratches it does an itch. Like, that's a good way to put it. I love action RPGs, but same. like I don't want turn-based RPGs to go away. You know what I mean? Like same, same. So it it just very much scratch just scratches an itch. Octopath Traveler, yeah. Bravely Default, games like that. These are games that I want to continue to come out for the rest of my life because, like, yeah, I love playing Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, I love playing things like Xenoblade, which is a more active type game. Yep, Tales games, but, stuff like that. But I still want the classic style RPGs. So yeah, I agree with you. So where you're saying scratches and I agree with that sentiment uh, as well. This these types of games are needed to me. They're a different kind of game. Like they have a different feel to it. You get to literally sit there, stare at the screen, and analyze the situation without like 
being attacked at the same time. Yeah. So I like that style. It's more strategic in that in a different way. Like there, obviously, action RPGs are strategic too, just in a different way. So I'm really excited for this. I didn't know that we would be getting this uh, so soon. But uh, I didn't expect this at all. I'm sure someone did, but when this popped up, like I was giddy. I did not yeah. know we were getting knocked up past. This two. made me very happy, and also I, I cannot stress this enough. The character designs are so unique. Mm-hmm. When they went through the eight characters, so I played the first game, and I remember what every one of them looks like. They found a way because the, all the classes are the same. Like they have the warrior, the scholar, and all that stuff. Again, right? Apothecary. All of them are the same, but they look so different now <laughs> that it's gonna. It's not gonna feel the same choosing the warrior that you were in the first one and the warrior that you are. Like if you choose the warrior yeah. in this one, uh, this the warrior in this one is actually a samurai. Yep. Like he's in some. He's on some. And they, they probably country. have like different. Like there, pro- there's probably going to be some skills that are still like from Bravely Default yes, One, but there's going to be like good. new skills or different skills to mix it up as well to make them feel yes. even more different. But his name is Hikari, and he's blatantly a fucking samurai. And I just think that's really cool. They completely changed up because the first guy uh, from the uh, Octopath Traveler One, he was more of a mercenary style guy. He was more of a Game of Thrones, big armor wearing dude, mm-hmm. and that was his vibe. He was very honorable. He was like handed a king type vibes, right? Like he was a he was the a king's guard is more accurate. He was a king's guard guy, and this guy is more feudal Japan samurai style. So I'm really liking that. You're completely it's completely different this time. Uh, and one of the other things the scholar the black mage his name is oswald he seems evil like they yeah, actually dude, tell you he seems all like he, he's like alpha revenge or something right yes, that's what they, they said tell you, yeah they like a, a scholar which is a black mage out for revenge and i was like holy <laughs> shit and he's he the name oswald is also kind of like you know you dude like, he was looking it. like I, I was getting like full metal alchemist vibes like he was like over the fuck like he looked out of his mind like he looked like like hohenheim or some shit i don't know like he, he does, just he doesn't yeah he has long white hair and like this really close beard um he looks like he casts spells but not, not for good yeah not for good i really like the character design and i'm interested to play through these arcs that they have these story arcs that they have that are fully developed again i can't stress it enough they, the game is just really well done if you didn't play the first one I, I highly recommend you play the first one also because this doesn't look like they changed anything as far as graphics so if you if you want to play the second one you might as well play the first one because it's essentially the same exact game with just different stories, different characters. It's going to just be a everything. new... It's the same game, but it's a new game. It's just more stories. Yes, yeah, more stories. So it's like they added another eight characters to it. Uh, and that's really... It is a different world. But as far as the, the look of the game, like it looks very, very much the same, which I am appreciative of because nothing was wrong with the first one. And the music, oh my god. The music of Octopath Traveler, <laughs> because it's a Square game. Yeah, baby. It just looks... It looks so good, and then the sounds so good because Squarish is so good at developing. When did they give a release piece. date for this? I don't think so. I um. Uh, I, so actually, myself ha- have never ended the first Octopath Traveler, so I think yeah. I'm going to get on that. I think I'm gonna get my hands on it again. And, oh, um, they did February twenty fourth. I fucking th- there's just too many games, man. So this is when Bravely Default came out in twenty twenty one. Oh my! Because it's just like Fire Emblem comes out in January. This yep. comes out in February. Pokemon no Pokemon both. comes out in like November. There's just like so many other like, and then you Zelda know, so comes out in May. And there's like other games in between there. This is the exact timeline we had for Brave and Default in 2021, and then Monster Hunter Rise in May. Like it came out, it came out in March actually. So we had like one month to play Brave and Default, which we actually accomplished that. Um, Octopath Traveler is also a game that I think we could complete in a month or under. Like it, it's not yeah, yeah. they're not they're not games that you will have to play like hundreds of hours on. I don't think so. Like I was able to get go through all eight stories and then get all the special job classes that are like in post end game, whatever. I'll get all the special job classes and fight the real ultimate boss. It's always like a real ultimate boss. After you do all eight stories, there's like one big boss that you fight, obviously. And uh you, I did all of that, and I don't think it took me longer than, like, three three to four weeks. But there is a lot of games coming out, like Kenny said. I agree. And this, this when I saw this in the direct, I was... Hey, guys. If you like this clip, we have full video versions of our podcast episodes available on the I Am There Patreon, as well as exclusive content. If you'd like to listen to our full podcast episodes or find us on any other social media platforms, you can do so by clicking the link tree below.